What up fam, this is Kevin Bass from TheDebtWars.com and I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about this paper called Seminal Molecular Evidence that Sauna Exposure Affects Human Spermatogenesis. That is to say, evidence that sauna, being in the sauna, affects like how your sperm are made. And in this paper, they show very clearly that the sperm count is demolished and sperm function is severely dis disrupted as well. <clears throat> Study question. What are the effects of continuous sauna exposure on seminal parameters, sperm chromatin, sperm apoptosis, and expression of genes involved in heat stress and hypoxia? Summary answer. Scrotal hyperthermia by exposure to sauna can induce a significant alteration of spermatogenesis. And here is the study design. It's a longitudinal time course study. That is to say, you take, in this case, 10 men, and you, you follow them over a period of time. You uh, collect samples <laughs> before sauna, at T0, after three months of sauna sessions, T1, after three months and six months at the end of sauna exposure, T3, sorry, T2 and T3. So you, ha so, so you have before sauna, after three months of sauna exposure, three months after the end of sauna exposure, and then six months after the end of sauna exposure. Essentially a nine month study. Three months of sauna, three months no sauna, six months no sauna. Three months after that first three months after no sauna. So again, before sauna exposure, after three months of sauna exposure, three months after the end of sauna exposure, so you, end, you just do three months of sauna exposure, then you end sauna exposure then you wait three months with no sauna exposure afterward, then another three months of no sauna exposure afterward. So three, 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 nine months. Okay, so two, 10 normo zoospermic volunteers, that is to say men who had normal amounts of sperm, underwent two sauna sessions per week for three months. In other words, since there's you know four weeks in a month, that's 12 weeks in three months, that's 24 sessions in three months. Not even every day, just two a week, 24 sessions over the course of 90 days. At 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, each lasting 15 minutes, just 15 minutes, 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. Sex hormones, sperm parameters, sperm chromatin structure, and sperm apoptosis and expression of genes involved in heat stress and hypoxia were evaluated at the start and the end of the sauna exposure and after three and six months from the sauna discontinuation. What were the findings? We found a strong impairment of sperm count and motil motility with, while no significant change in sex hormones was present. So no change in sex hormones, but the sperm were affected. Decreases in the percentage of sperm with normal histone pr protamine substitution, chromatin condensation and mitochondrial function were evident at time one, so right at the end of the first three months of exposure, and strong parallel, parallel upregulation of genes involving heat stress and hypoxia were found. All these effects were completely reversed by six months. All right, let's actually look at the, some of the figures, because this is cool. So figure two, you see a normal sperm concentration, it's almost 100, uh, 100 times 10 to the 6 cells per milliliter. So for every milliliter, uh, you're going to have uh, 10 to the 8. So that's 100 million, 100 million sperm per milliliter. Well, that 100 million is going to go from 100 million all the way down to 
about 25 million. It drops literally by about 75%. So you quarter your sperm count. You reduce your sperm count by 75%, by three fourths, you get a quarter of the sperm count that you had starting out. That is T1. T2, which is after three months after discontinuation, you're still at about half your sperm count. You still haven't recovered completely yet. So there's some permanent effects or some semi-permanent effects or some chronic effects you should call them. But, but by T3, you're back to normal, which is to say by six months after discontinuation, you're back to normal. Wow. So a couple questions. What if you go do more than two times a week? Are you going to get even a greater reduction below 25%? Maybe get 10% or 5%. If you do four or five, six times a week, are you going to get 5% of your sperm? You're going to kill off 95% of your sperm. We don't know. We don't have any evidence for that yet. Um, but what we do know is just twice a week is going to kill off 75% of your sperm and it's not going to come back until six months later. Okay? So you have some sort of testicular impairment that's going to be semi-chronic, chronic, it's going to last more than three months after you quit using sauna. So another thing is, what if you're already impaired in your spermatogenesis? Is it gonna come back completely, your spermatogenesis, or is it gonna stay depressed? Like, are you gonna restore your sperm spermatogenic function completely at all if you start out with impaired spermatogenesis? Maybe it's gonna cause permanent damage. We don't know, because these are normal men. We don't know the answer to that. So two questions, what if you increase the frequency and what if you already start with bad spermatogenesis in the first place? If you start with bad spermatogenesis, are you gonna get a bigger decrease in spermatogenesis because you're already kind of vulnerable? That's another question. But in any case, we have uh, this other part of the figure. So the sperm count goes, the sperm concentration goes down by quite a lot. Sperm count also goes down by about two thirds. Motility also goes down by about a third or maybe even two fifths, 40%, so you lose even sperm function. So not only are you losing uh, the concentration is going down, but you're also losing motility. You're also losing uh, the movement. They can't, they don't function as well. So let's say you lose, you know, three fourths of the, of the count and then you lose about almost half of the function. So you're almost down to like an eighth of what you had in terms of your function. And interestingly, there's no effect of any of this on FSH, LH, which is responsible for spermatogenesis, in particular FSH is, and testosterone, estrogen. Uh, although inhibin B is, is, um, shows a drop, which is interesting, that might be related to it. And that rebounds by T3, by six months. So maybe that's related to it, the, the inhibin B. But in any case, we see a change, a, a dramatic change in these hypoxia and heat shock proteins in the testes, and or rather an ejaculated sperm. So it says at the end of the conclusion, in the concluding paragraph, it says, it is not clear whether our findings are related to elevation of testicular temperature or to side effects induced by heating of the whole body. Whatever the case, the large use of Finnish sauna or the widespread use of Finnish sauna in Nordic countries, if I was gonna edit this, the widespread use or the extensive use 
of Finnish sauna in Nordic countries and its growing use in other parts of the world make it important to consider the impact of this lifestyle choice on men's fertility. So are men fertile? More mechanisms are needed to understand whether the protective mechanisms involved in normal zoospermic men are fully operational in subfertile men and in prepubertal pre pre subjects in whom spermatogenesis is at a more vulnerable developmental period and whether these protective mechanisms can protect such men from testicular damage, maybe permanent testicular damage. So the question is, is like, are all these decreases in spermatogenesis, are they gonna be permanent if you're vulnerable or if you're developing, we don't know. And what do these changes look like in people who are already low in function? And I have my own question, as I pointed out, what about if we have more common, you know, more frequent sauna use? Are we gonna get even a greater reduction in sperm? and sperm function. And maybe potentially permanent, again, because you only did twice a week here, but what if you overwhelm the compensatory mechanisms by doing it too often? Will you get a permanent reduction in sperm count? We don't know. So this is important. One of my things is pointing out misinformation on the internet. And a lot of the sauna stuff is misinformation, like a lot of the sauna stuff pushed by many of the major influencers is misinformation, it's overhyped. But this video provides a corrective because, you know, I also try to fix the overhype, but then there's also risks as well that we need to discuss to get a full picture. And so now I'm gonna flesh out some of the picture with these risks. And that's what I've, I've shown here, that there's these risks that you also need to take into account in addition to some of the purported benefits, which are probably not as substantial as is common, commonly claimed. Um, in the future, I'm going to make a video where we talk about everything, all the risks, all the benefits, the trade-offs, etc. And we'll do that with everything I talk about so that we can get a full, clear picture of everything, which you don't usually get online, unfortunately. You usually just get the hype. But for now, I'm just going to point out a major risk that's rarely mentioned, this loss of fertility, a dramatic uh, demolition of male fertility, male fertility from sauna use. And I hope you liked the video. Uh, you can please subscribe, click subscribe at the bottom. Do that, please, right there. So that you can get more awesome videos from yours truly. Uh, like the video, everybody click like please as well. And then leave a comment. So for the algorithm, hail the algorithm, you can write. Many people are doing that now and I thank you guys so much. Please keep doing that because the videos are starting to get more traction. YouTube's actually picking up some of the videos. It's actually pretty cool. Like um, I saw the bone video. Uh, it was doing normal, you know, normal amounts of growth, like in terms of its view count. And then suddenly uh, it like skyrocketed. It, like suddenly the curve sh like dramatically became much more steep in the view count over time. And I looked at the the analytics and it looks like entirely internally. It's in, it is entirely internally. It's there's nothing almost there's there's nothing external that's contributing to that. So it's entirely from the YouTube algorithm. So YouTube picked that video up after about a day, and then started like really promoting it. And I don't know how the algorithm does that or why it does that, but it's like cool. And I think maybe these comments that you guys are leaving are helping. So please keep leaving the comments. Okay, cool. If you want to find me on social media, though, you want to find me at Kevin and Bass, K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S, -S, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, also Patreon, become a donor. You know, you can always say for the algo, but then please, it would be nice if some of you guys could also as well, if you can't afford it, sign up for at least $5. $20 would be more, much appreciated as well, uh, but it, at least $5 if you can afford it, signing up as a patron, $5 a month, it would be much appreciated. Okay, uh, finally, check out the YouTube channel at KBass Philadelphia. Just Google, or sorry, search that in the, uh, the YouTube search bar or the podcast at the Kevin Bass Show in your favorite podcast directory. Uh, make sure to leave a review and a rating that helps the podcast, it helps people to see that there's many reviews and ratings and this is a popular and cool podcast. 
and then it helps people decide to subscribe. And also, of course, subscribe to the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. That would be awesome. Leave feedback, send me a direct message, ask questions if you have any questions about what I'm doing. Better to do it on the videos themselves. If you're a patron, send me a direct message. If you want to do some consultations and learn on a deeper level some of the things that I've been talking to you guys about, you can become one of my consultation people. You can check out the website at thedietwars.com in order to sign up for a consultation. You can talk to yours truly over the telephone and uh, learn the latest and greatest things that I know and that I'm working on as far as the, the stuff I'm learning. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys in the next video. Peace.